Ever wonder what our top five tools are to do it, build it, make it? We're gonna show you what they are right now. <laughs> What is up? Welcome back. Do you like to do a little make it great? That's what we do on this channel every week. This week we're doing a little viewer mail. We get a lot of questions. We've gotten a lot of questions. We got a lot of questions about tips or tricks or tools that we use. So we decided to take our time and give you our top five tools. And our top five viewer questions. Disclaimer, we are not sponsored by any of the brands you see today. Tool number one, our drill. Our drill is our screwdriver, our sander, our buffer, our cutter. This thing does all kinds of things, but mainly we use it as a screwdriver. Secondary as a drill. Yep. I'd say for us and what we do, it's mostly used as a screw gun. So if you're putting screws into the little wood projects that we do, this is what you need. It's way better than hand screwing it. Yeah, than a screwdriver. And it's way better than a hand drill. <laughs> way better. Tool number two is our nail gun. This is Brad's favorite tool. This <laughs> might be my favorite tool. It is his favorite tool. <laughs> you may not have a battery powered one, but the battery powered one is great because it's super mobile. But a pneumatic nail gun, any nail gun is great. I had a pneumatic one before we went with this one. Uh, this one we're able to do the whole shiplap wall with one battery. It was great. It was a time saver. And it's it's light enough for anyone to use. It's a little bit heavy, but it's still light enough that I can use it and he can use it. He uses it most often because I try and keep him busy during the filming. <laughs> oh, I see how it is. <laughs> Tool number three, saw. Saw is super important for any wood project. Yeah, we use a miter saw, we use a circular saw, but you can use a jigsaw for any of our projects. Any projects that we've done in the past year, this jigsaw could have done them all. Now, I really recommend the, the miter saw, but if you had to start with one, I'd say the jigsaw would do, like he said, most of what you needed to do. It's easy to use, pretty versatile. Tool number four, hot glue gun. <laughs> the glue gun is my favorite tool. What's great about this thing is there's no cord. I love the fact that you can put the battery in the bottom of it and use it. Garrett can't handle the glue gun. He seems to put his fingers in it. I don't understand why he can't keep his fingers out of the hot glue, <laughs> but that is a thing for him. Anyway, the same battery is used for this thing. This one's new for us, but I love this thing. I hate that thing. I burn myself all the time. <laughs> it does. <laughs> Tool number five, a vinyl cutter or a plotter cutter, whatever you call it. We use the Cricut. Yes, specifically this Cricut Maker because it has the adaptive tool system. So I know you've seen us build lots of different projects and we use lots of different little blades or tools that come with it. So this fine point blade comes with it and it's used for cutting your typical vinyl, heat transfer vinyl. But it also has the rotary blade which would be used for fabrics or the deep cut blade or what else? This knife blade which is used for chipboard. And then we have two new blades that we haven't even had a chance to make a project with yet and that would be the engraving tool and the scoring wheel. This thing is great. I can't tell you how many projects. Most of our projects, Most of our projects. <laughs> have been made with this Cricut Maker. I love it. Any project that had a design on it was probably done with the Cricut. Right, Painted, stencils, stencils, t-shirts, t-shirts, you know all of them. Yeah, wood burning. We used it for wood burning. All kinds of things. When you do go off and start collecting your tool set, we would say pick a brand so that you can use the same battery in all of your tools. Bonus tool number six. Now this is one we really couldn't agree on. Now I felt like it might be the heat gun because we used it for wood burning, drying the paint, um, melting things. But I think it's got to be the heat press. You can't mm -hmm. hardly have a Cricut without having some sort of a heat press. That's true. Now we did have the big clamshell one, but I might have knocked that off the table two or three times. He did. Onto the wood floor. <laughs> it was not pretty. And it became a challenge for us personally to store it. We don't have a very big studio here. It's actually a tiny little room. <laughs> and we didn't have a great, great place to store it, but this easy press is easy to store. I can store it right here in my little tabletop. Well, that's our top five tools. Like, if you dropped us on a desert island with this tool set, 
the drill, the nail gun, the jigsaw, hot glue gun, and a cricket, and a power source. <laughs> we should be able to craft our way out of that one. <laughs> For sure. We're also going to answer our top five viewer questions. I'm the one that answers all the comments on our videos. If you see a really dry answer, <laughs> it was probably Garrett's. <laughs> He's very short and to the point. So I typically answer all of the questions. And so I thought I would answer those on our video today. So question number one. <laughs> and we got this a lot last week too. Um, when we made our Christmas front porch sign, how to ungroup an SVG. So I'm going to show you in design space how to do that real quick. And right now the image is already grouped. So the first thing we want to do is ungroup our image. And then you'll just group the images that you want to fit on a 24 inch mat up to 23 and a half inches. So we'll select all of these. We'll hold down the control key and keep selecting until we're close to 24 inches. I think if we select the Y, we'll be over 24. So we'll just go ahead and group these images and attach them so that now we can print just that group. Grouped images on three 24 inch mats. Question number two, our trick for Painting on wood. When you're using a stencil or creating a stencil and putting it on wood, our number one tip is to add this Mod Podge. First thing you'll want to do is put your vinyl stencil down, add the Mod Podge, let it dry, then add your paint. That way it doesn't bleed under the stencil. If you're using wood, glass, metal, this will seal it so it doesn't bleed under there. It is definitely a huge lesson learned for us. <laughs> huge lesson learned. Question number three. What kind of paint do we use? Chalk paint. Yes. So, I love this stuff. I hate to paint, but I love chalk paint. As you know, I say it over and over again, Garrett is the worst painter. But what's so great about this chalk paint is it's super versatile. It hides most of your flaws. It dries quickly. It dries super fast. If some of us are impatient. I would say that's both of us. We mentioned the heat gun. <laughs> yeah. I use the heat gun and the chalk paint all the time. Moving right along. That's, <laughs> that's how our projects dry so quickly. But yes, I would highly recommend the chalk paint, but if you're gonna use it outdoors, you wanna add the polyacrylic on top of it because it does... Um, Absorb moisture quickly. Yes, yeah, yeah, exactly. You gotta seal it. Question number four. Can you really assemble those wood projects with glue? Yes, you can, this Gorilla Glue. So we used it on a couple of our projects. I think we used it on our Merry Christmas front porch welcome sign. Yeah. It's been sitting out there for a couple of months no issues it really is a great super versatile glue so yeah it it will puff up and it gets in those cracks and crevices and really binds that material together and if you get that squeeze out on the sides it's pretty easy to chip off and then sand up and get going again yep let it dry uh, pop it right off but two hours with this stuff is just like nails just yes. like nails so if you don't have this fancy nailer yet this is a great substitute in the interim mm -hmm. little clamp Little Gorilla Glue. <laughs> Bam! Question number six. Oh, number where did I get five. that? I don't know. <laughs> Jumping ahead. Yeah. Question number five. We've done a lot of videos on sublimation, and here recently we've done some tricks with how to sublimate with cotton t-shirts, because you can't always or don't always want to use a high acrylic content shirt. So we've shown some tips on how to sublimate on glitter heat transfer vinyl. So you do want to use the glitter. I don't think it'll work on regular vinyl. We haven't really tried it, but the reason why it sublimates to glitter vinyl is because it will bond, the sublimation ink will bond with the little crystals on the glitter heat transfer vinyl. You can use any kind. I haven't tried it with any other colors but white, but you can use this rainbow white, which I have in my hand, or just straight white or silver white, any of them it will bond to. Now you do it just like you would regularly do a glitter vinyl t-shirt so you put down your base glitter vinyl heat transfer for 15 seconds to get it to stick and then you would sublimate on that glitter vinyl just like you would typically sublimate on any surface 
So mirror the image and apply it with heat, whatever the recommended heat is for that ink and paper that you're using. And it bonds right to these little glitter crystals. Thanks for joining us for our video today. If you have any tools that you would recommend, put them in the comments below. Or if you have additional questions, put them in the comments below. We're, I'm happy to answer them. Kim answers them all. <laughs> and just like always, if you like this video, hit that like button. And if you're not yet subscribed, we do a project every week. And you should join us. Hit that subscribe button, tick that bell to be notified of our new videos each week. And we'll see you guys next week.